be nice. Maybe.
superior wisdom as I proclaim to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Hmm, that sounds pretty simple. I came to you in weakness and fear and with much trembling. I guarantee you when Bob Weber faces this Friday night, there will be much gnashing of teeth and fear and, and uh, trembling. And verse 4, my message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on men's wisdom, but on God's power. So that your faith might rest on God's power. Awesome set of verses there. At 2 Corinthians 1 through 5, or 1 Corinthians 2, 1 through 5. Well, what's the outline given there? What is the outline there? It's very simple. First of all, a good minister is one who'll tell of God. Let's look back at Don Minton. Did we ever do anything except maybe two Disney trips in the time he was here that we didn't have preaching, that we didn't speak about the Bible, we didn't have Bible study? And you know, I, I really want to find out from Bob when he's here Friday night, is that his intention? You know, so many times youth programs are pseudo-babysitting. And I am very excited and very happy to be an adult worker in a youth program that isn't a bunch of babysitters. Man, we're out there doing things. Most importantly, we're out there learning about the Bible. What I say isn't of any importance at all in your life. But I do know that what God says in your life will change it. Will change it. And give you the strength to carry through the downs and give you a chance to really rejoice with the ups. And you know, that, that's so clear there. First of all, we'll tell of God. That's in that first, bit, first verse there. It says, testimony about God. And the second thing is I want to make sure that Bob Weber knows Christ as his Savior. That's extremely important. Not who he played ball for. Not what his track record is as college. You know, not that he was graduated cum laude, cum laude, triple A with a 4.7 average. And he could sell computers on the side if he wanted to. Nobody cares about that. Does he know Jesus Christ as his Savior? That's important. Because in the second verse, it says real clearly, uh, except, I knew, except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. That's an important key. Very, very important key. And the third thing is, found in verse 3, I came to you in weakness and in fear. I want to make sure Bob Weber's got a little humility. You know what I mean? I want to make sure he's humble. When we get down and grovel in the dirt, I want to find someone that's going to get down and grovel in the dirt with us and have fun. I don't want someone that's going to sit there in the coat and tie and act stuff shirt and say, oh, I'm too religious to get down and have fun like a young person would. And as you know, none of us have any coupons. We'll do whatever y'all do, including Don Mitten. And that's what I want to make sure that Bob Weber's going to be like. You know? That he's humble. That he has a lot of humility. And then in verse 4 down there, it points out very clear about the Spirit's power. I think that anything any of us do is, should not be in our own power. That's one of the reasons why I get so fired up sometimes when y'all get ready to, to speak a testimony or something, and for the first three to four minutes of a five-minute testimony, you apologize you were just told five minutes ago and you're not prepared. But you can't stand up there like Pastor Beamer and give a long oratory. Man, all they want to hear, all the, all the adults in the church want to hear is your heart. I need a volunteer in Jefferson to do this fine, and I need four volunteers in the back. And